Good morning, everyone, here in Western Australia, of course, and good evening if you're in Canada, the States, and elsewhere. Today, I'm going to be flying solo, which we've been talking about, because our, my beautiful friend, Rodi, my partner in, in this, is not feeling well. And it was a really interesting conversation. I'm just checking here if it's going live. Is do you still push through or not? How do you support yourself in this? And I, I think we can talk about this again and again until we actually get it without feeling guilty. So I'm just sorry to be doing this to you. I am just wanting to check it is going live because she's going to be here in the comments My with me. Oops, here we are. Hello, yes. lovely. Yes. Hi, Rodin. Lovely to see you. And another thing about this is was, was really interesting. How did we want to do this? Did we cancel? Did we postpone? Do I come on by myself? So all these things get talked about because saying yes to self is really can still be really hard. It means setting boundaries. It means actually looking at yourself. It means letting people down. But we'd rather let people down than ourselves. So then it came to me, and I'm very proud of myself, because this is, again, when you start caring for yourself, when you start saying yes, when you start setting boundaries, because there's different ways to care for yourself, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. But I was thinking there this morning I was, as I was making my hot lemon, because that's part of my self-care, it's part of my morning ritual, was what else could we do? Now, I know Rory isn't feeling well. However, I just put it to her. How would you feel being in the comments with me so we can still actually interact? But she doesn't need to be fully present. She doesn't need to use excess energy because she, you know, she can simply do that. So that's why I've got her here. Ha uh ha. -huh. She can't well, I can just wave to her. And um, so we can still keep talking. So anyone else who is here, you know, again, let's look at what does self-care mean. So I have my rituals when I start. So when I come down into the healing space, creative space, I always, whether I'm working on my own or with clients um, who come to see me face to face or online, I always do this. It's just a welcoming. So I just go, I'm Chantal, I'm here and I'm present. I say that three times because what that does, it brings me into my body. It brings me here and present. I do that three times. I ring the bell three times. And I also do it when I end the day or when I leave the space, because again, it's just clearing that energy. It's just going, acknowledging what's happened or the beautiful experiences I've had in here. So these are little ways you can do it. The other one is I always like to light a candle. And um, it's just welcoming, just, it's just a lovely ritual. It's welcoming spirits. I love just the flame. You know, I get some local ones, beautiful aromatherapy ones. So I do that. In addition, another one I love using, and today I'm using Rose Otto because I'm not in the best space myself, and Rose is all about the heart. Because for me, I mean, heart caring for yourself can come from anywhere in your body and any of the healing energies, but I think it's also about just loving ourselves, just connecting here. And Rose is a very good one for that. It's also about sadness, femininity, taking you deep, deep with, into your sensuality. And sometimes we lose sight of that. What does it mean to be sensual? Ah, and self-care is part of that. It's not luxury. So as Rodin said, yeah, you love using candles. See, it was interesting. Rodin, Rodin is saying here, it's hard for me to cancel as well, especially because I kept hoping I would feel better. See, isn't that interesting? So thankful we can adjust when we need to. And that is the power of when you've come to a place of, really understanding yourself, understanding each other, empathy and understanding. I've been talking about this quite a bit this last week when I finally acknowledged to myself and accepted that I, at the moment now I'm in a depressed state. And, um, you know, like I kept hoping I'd feel better. Same here. But sometimes you've got to just, it is what it is. And deep within you need to know it'll pass. But when you're right in the middle of it, when you're right not feeling well, you don't feel that. And of course you want to feel better. Who likes to feel unwell, whether it be physically, mentally, or whatever way it might be? We don't feel like feeling like we don't feel like feeling unwell. So how am I going to combine my art here? So I just thought I'd just do some do I just decided to keep it very simple today. So I've printed something out and I can just talk as I just do some doodling. Because that it's just again self-care. So I was thinking about. What do we need to do in the different areas of our lives? Well, physically, of course, it's about learning how to pause, stop, take breaks, whether we're working, at home, mothers, no matter what the busyness is. So it's about taking breaks, moments in time, and it can be just 
pausing in between each task. It can be having a cup of tea. It can be having a massage. It can be going for a walk. So there's so many different ways physically you can do it. It's about resting, getting good sleep, eating well. You know, I know when I get a little bit down, I go straight to sugar, which of course doesn't make me feel any better, does it? So that's the physical aspect. How do you, and you'll also like what Rodin's doing now when you aren't feeling well. Remember, you've got to push through. You've got to push through. I think there was that ad for, um, which one was it? Nurofen or one of those for headaches, you know, soldier on. That's the big thing we soldier on. So of course we feel we need to soldier on when actually we don't. Our bodies are telling us, the innate wisdom of our body is telling us to stop. You've overdone it. You've pushed it. So there's that aspect of it. So caring for, so what did I say? Exercise, um, eating well. Then of course, <clears throat> excuse me, there's the mental side. So the mental side is where we start to beat ourselves up. I should be feeling better. I'm pathetic. I'm weak. So I've been feeling this feeling depressed. I felt shame. Who do I share it with? Do I share anything? Because we don't want to be seen as we're not coping. We don't want to be seen as, oh, well, she isn't strong like she comes across. Because often what we do is we put ourselves out there as being so strong and independent. Because in one way we are, whether we have a partner or living on our own. But on the other hand, we don't want to break that facade. We don't want to have a crack in that facade. So, again, coming back to Rodin saying this, this was her also caring for that part of her because, as she said, it was hard for her to cancel because she didn't want to let herself down. She didn't want to let me down. She didn't want to let anyone who's watching down. Don't want to let anyone down. Like, really? Again, when you think about it, it's like, who are we thinking about? Yes, it was last minute, but you know what? There's the power in that. So I really want anyone who's watching to see that you can say yes at the last minute, despite perhaps you might even get pressure from family, friends, colleagues, whoever it might be. But ultimately, you are the most important person in this because all you're doing is hurting yourself, whether it be physically, mentally, emotionally or spiritually by carrying on. So, you know, just please be aware of that. So I know for me, with that mental aspect, I had to really talk to myself. So how do you get support? Yes, I had my doodling, my art. Yes, I have my journaling. And yes, you know, I have certain things in place, but it wasn't enough. So I did go and see the psychologist and to help me just talk about it, to actually accept and actually state, I am depressed right now. And then I could talk about various things with her about that without feeling judged. And then I also made the decision I would go on antidepressants. Now, I have, that is quite hard for me to actually state out loud because, you know, who wants to admit that? I feel I've always seen them as an enemy rather than as a friend. And right now I need that extra support because something is not happening. So, again, it's that mental. Logically, it's a beautiful day outside or even if it's raining or snowing. Logically, you know you've got good, beautiful home, part, whatever it might be. But there's something not happening in here that you don't feel that. And that's what we need to acknowledge. Thank you, um, Rodin. She says, bravo. Well said, the negative self-talk can be nasty, but by giving ourselves permission allows us to take care of ourselves in the way we need. Exactly. So again, I want you just to pause for a moment. Where can you take care of yourself mentally? So that is literally mindset, okay? When you work out the mindset, you support your body, but also allow your body to support your mindset. So then the other one is emotions, of course, is feeling down. How do you support yourself when you are feeling upset, grief, down, in trauma, angry, all those sort of things? It's how do you allow yourself to feel that, allow it to come up and, and not push through, but how can you be with it and stay with it and feel the feels? Because, again, they're coming back. And we've spoken about this before. It's too easy to bypass it's too easy to be in love and light, can't feel that. And also we're taught good girls don't feel that, good girls don't express that. So what we do is we suppress, and of course, it comes out physically. So, you know, so how can you support yourself? So again, I'm going to come back to my experience, and this is what Rawdine's doing as well, is I needed to just withdraw for a week or so. My partner's not home, so I really was on my own. And I just had to look at, okay, this is how I'm feeling right now. How can I support myself? So again, don't do it on your own if it's going to make it worse. And finally, what I was then able to do, because again, Rodin had the courage to do this, reach out to someone you feel safe. So I did have the psychologist first. So I realized I was thinking about the conversation and how I did this step by step. So first of all, it's just admitting it. I admitted it. I accept it. There's it. What can I do now? I needed to reach out to the psychologist. 
as I said, the GP. Then I could start slowly mentioning it to a few trusted friends um, where I felt safe. And then I finally did put it onto Facebook as posts in a big group that I mean, an entrepreneur group, and on my own because I feel it's important we start talking about this. So that was me accepting and acknowledging it, honouring and caring for myself in there. But I had to wait until I felt ready. So that's coming back to listening to your body and intuition. And then, of course, spiritually, it's how do you support yourself, self-care? What rituals do you bring in? Is it through prayer, meditation, yoga, retreats? art, walking. So you see, they all actually combine into each other to be able to support yourself in that. So there's that. And then it's how do you voice it? So again, how do you say yes to yourself? So again, that's setting boundaries. That's actually valuing yourself. It's really important to be able to do that. And in fact, what I might do is I've got a YouTube. Um, I did a video on that, how to set boundaries for yourself. And also that applies to anyone in business is letting clients down do you you know um do you let them know at last minute and yes there will be people who'll be upset yes there will be people who are going to react the thing is it's how can you sit there with the discomfort of someone they might reject you abandon you in this course of being business don't want to be your client anymore you know it's um but ultimately you're not going to be of service to that person that client that supplier that friend whoever it might be if you're not caring for yourself so I know for me, what I did was, could I still see clients in this state? Yes, I can, because I was able to step into this space, this my beautiful healing space, do all the things around me, and I could be fully present there with someone. Because also there's empathy and understanding, and that's important. And like Rodin has just said here, having our safe people is so important, because it is. And you'll be surprised where you think you're going to be safe and where you actually aren't. And that's been another lesson to learn. And people don't know what they don't know because we don't know how to hold someone in intensity of feeling, grief, depression, trauma, anger, whatever that might be. Because it says, it's, actually, it says more about us as the person rather than them. So what it, uh, having a hand or two to hold gives us that extra, uh, extra strength. Thank you. And so true about what I was saying. And it is, and it can be a virtual one. Because nowadays, there's so many ways that we can support someone. So it's asking them, what do you need? How can I support you? So that gives me the person. So in my case, it gives me the chance to go, you know what? And I'm normally a chatterbox, as you can tell. I love to talk and love to be there and whatever. But for, for this time, I was just like, I actually can't talk to anyone. I'm too tired. I need to be selective where I put my energy. Again, self-care boundaries. So I just say to people, just message me and just say, I'm here for you or I'm thinking of you and knowing that I might not respond or it gives me the chance to respond when I can. Because also people need to know that you are okay or that you are coping, I should say. Because I know I mentioned it to a couple of friends. They took me out for a very, very belated 60th on Saturday and I started talking about this and used some quite strong words. And I, to be honest, I was a bit, I realised it gave them a fright when I talked about, I'm going to even say it here, suicide, ideation, ideation. And because I used the word suicide and how not wanting to wake up and things like that. And of course, I shocked them and I didn't mean that. It was such a beautiful time. So I did retract a bit there and I did want to support them. But also at the same time, it's where can you feel safe to talk about that? Because that is a reality. It doesn't mean you'll do it. So if anyone gets triggered by this, please seek help. Reach out. I can talk to you. I can also support you with my services. Because you need to go somewhere, because I told so where it's safe, as we said, I've, I'm going to retract. So when I went to the psychologist, I know I've been going to her for now nearly 15 years. And when I was able to use those words, it was a relief because she just sat there and held me. And when I said to her emphatically, I would never do that, she understood that. So it's important because if we don't express it, we feel, yeah, it, it actually doesn't release it from our bodies either. So it's a fine line. Do we, don't we, how do we do it? How do we don't, we do the conversations, all right? Another one, which I'm going to talk about, because I think I've, is there anything else you can think of, Rodin? Because I suppose I could keep talking here. Other ways that we can care for ourselves. But I think the other one is, because we are doing our workshop on um, Thursday, my, uh, 26, which is my time, uh, AW uh, is Perth time, but Western Australia, uh, Wednesday evening um, Canadian time seven o'clock there eight o'clock in the morning here we're going to be doing our love letter workshop 
Now, this has actually been a really beautiful time that this actually we decided to do this just before I did my plunge into the darkness. And I've actually been doing a few love letters to myself with art. And I, don't, I think I've shown them in the other one, so I won't show them again. So I'm really excited to be doing that. But I am going to share something with you. See that art behind there? Actually, I'm just going to pick it up and bring it over. Because the other one is when you're in this state and, you know, it sometimes can be hard to sit down because perfectionism comes up, what will people think, all those insecurities, etc. So I've got an art class that I haven't done yet and I just came down yesterday into my beautiful space where I felt comfortable comfortable clothes on yeah no yay for our workshop I mean I can't wait either um we've got 10 spaces and we've got a few left so please join us I'll put the information again below but I came down and just sat down and listened to the course and allowed myself to free flow so this for me was emotional freedom it was spiritual freedom and it was physical because I just went with it despite so she said tune into how you're feeling well, I thought oh how am I feeling today I'm feeling a bit low but I'm wanting to bring in a little bit of color so again when we're doing the love letter you do it in your own way so it could be through art it could be through doodling it could be through writing and I think Rodin puts it beautifully you can do it through writing and then um make it into a beautiful piece of art so we will have once you sign up we will have a pdf to bring things i think one lady's got so thank you rodian i'm so proud of myself with that one because again i really let it go i use colors i wouldn't normally use but again i tuned in how did i feel i, I did orange at first because that's just a bright color and uh, it's also connecting to spiritual uh, not spirituality so creativity if you want to if you're going to go to that um, energy center the sh second second chakra then I also did purple because that's a spiritual one and I also like the the, the the juxtaposition of those colors I wanted it to be stark so again this is how we look at caring for ourselves so coming back to that self the letter one person who's um, going to join or mention she has so much fabric in her home so she's going to use potentially fabric so bring anything that you want to do create a collage whatever it's going to be a lovely two hours together as I said all the information will be in the links below reach out if you want to ask and just tell me as we finish Rodin have you got anything else you'd like to sell anyone here about caring for yourself saying yes to yourself remember yes Breathe that in to say, I'm saying yes to myself. And how does that feel? Mm. And I know when I have said yes in a very challenging, to something really challenging, and I've actually done it, I can't tell you the relief that I feel when you do it. And, of course, what happens is you build that muscle because it does take practice. Yeah, and I like that, as Rodin is saying, you can gather items that you love and use them in your art too. Exactly right. So use anything, bring in nature, leaves, whatever is important for you, or that's too hard. Once upon a time, I would have gone, I can't do that, therefore I won't turn up. Bring just paper and pencil. Could be your favourite journal, favourite colour pen, you know, any one of these, um, what you call them, Sharpies. And just turn up, let's get it going, because that's how you're going to explore and open up. And saying yes to yourself, oh, yes, crystals, baubles, pages from a book. Oh, I could go on about that, because I just did an art class uh, a little while ago about using pages from a book and writing on them and allowing the letters to come through. That was rather exciting and fun to do. So on that note, yes, but follow your instincts. Very, very important. So, again, that is what this is all about is following your instincts, following your gut, your intuition. How do you want to do this? Because remember, we use this a lot. There's no right or wrong. There's no, you know, yes, we can make mistakes, but is it a mistake? You know, again, this is how, what we're going to look at. So just bring yourself, follow, follow and trust. And that is coming back into, yes, that feels right for me. Oh, just feel your body when you actually say that to yourself. Initially, you might not feel that, but just go, yes that is what I want to do and that feels right for me now just so that you know we won't be doing a um 
replay or recording it because it is personal so if you can't make the dates yeah well we won't but we will do be doing another one again so just know that if you do sign and book up uh, sorry book in and or sign up and pay you will need to turn up because we won't be doing um any replays all right everyone thank you Roddy. what what last again i keep saying the last thing what would you like to say as we end so you're still part of this lovely ending of the conversation? Is there anything else you'd like to add? So I'm just waiting for her to do that. And as you can see, I did very little arts. I get so excited. I used my hands a lot, but in a different way. All right, can't see if Rodin's putting anything there. Oh, it might be a lag happening here. So, yes. She says, thank you, Chantal, for shining today. Kiss, hug, kiss, hug. My most pleasure, Rodin. I could hold you in the space and you could hold me. And that is the power of being there and supporting each other with love, kindness, empathy, and understanding and compassion. All my love to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. And remember, reach out if anything has triggered you or got you thinking about things. Bye.